Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're having a look at a Blender workflow problem and some possible solutions to it. So recently I've been working on this turret and it's got this cool electro gun thing. Basically the sort of electric charge I imagine goes along these rails or between the rails and then you've got these points at the end which control the electrical discharge and focus them through this V-shape muzzle I guess you'd call it whatever you'd call the end point for an electro gun. And to make this interesting, I gave it this cool sort of V-type shape, which just looks a bit sci-fi and interesting. But placing these potentially seems like a bit of a nightmare. Or at least when I was beginning Blender or getting to a sort of intermediate stage, this felt hideous. But actually, once you know the tools, this is relatively simple to do, even though we've got no good angles to do this on. And actually, even the origin of this is at not a really good angle to do this for, or the angle for this, because I'm using it to currently do a mirror modifier across to create this V-shape, so I can't even start moving the origin about. So what I thought I'd cover is how I did the placement for these, and the central point that's booleaned out to make space for them. It seemed like a nice little workflow example. Now, what's going to happen by the end of this, and you'll notice, again, I'm trying to keep everything really non-destructive here, you can look at the amount of booleans that are on these, is that all of this is going to be, where are we, there. So eventually what we're going to have is all of this mirrored across to the other side, and we're going to have this basically being two barrels, so sort of like twin linked. And I need to finish all the detailing off here and some of the detailing at the back. But either way, you get the idea. But this is the bit that we're going to focus on here. So here we are in a new save file. And let's get started. So what I'm going to do is make the cutouts first. You'll see why I'm doing that and sort of the methodology or thought process here as I go along. So I'm just going to shift A, mesh, and let's bring in a cylinder. I want this to be pretty high because this is going to be printed big enough that we could notice this. And let's just G and move this so it's relatively close to where we want it to end up. So let's deal with aligning this first of all. And actually, this is relatively simple to do. We're just going to use the snapping features that come in Blender. So the snapping features are up here, and I've got this set as a mix. So it can snap to vertices, edges, and faces. I just want this to snap to faces just so that this is not too complicated. And then we're going to make sure this is ticked here, this align rotation to target. And I'm not even going to turn this on. We're going to use snap base to make sure we're picking the right things to snap. So what I'm going to do is press G to start moving, B to activate snap base. And we can see with snap base activated, it's now going to select all of the faces or it will put a circle over the mouse when it's on a face that we can select. So I'm going to select there and drag it over to here. And we've got that now snapped to this face. It's aligned perfectly. So we don't need to do anything more with that in terms of aligning. But I do want this, well, pretty centralized. What I'm going to do is centralize it in this direction here. So I need it somewhere there-ish. In terms of how far it is up this, this way, I'll probably sort of guesstimate it. Uh, I don't think I care that much. But there's going to be some other things to consider as well because I want them placed in multiple places. Again, we'll deal with this bit by bit. So I'm actually going to use an add-on for this. It's what gives me this cool pie menu and a lot of other things that I use in Blender. It's called Machine Tools. It costs $5, at least it did the last time I checked, though I've got the slightly upgraded version called DSX. But $5 is all you need for this, and it's got so many tools, it's well worth getting. But what we want to do is select a point in the middle here. So what I'm going to do is go into Edge Mode, select this edge, just there, and I'm going to Shift and S, and I'm going to again, this is from Machine Tools, bring my cursor to this edge. So the cursor is now there. Now you don't need to use Machine Tools for that, you can do it however you want. But what I'm gonna do now is really helpful in Machine Tools. I'm gonna select my object and I'm gonna click Alt and A. And that gets this Align option. Now I don't want the active, I want to align to the cursor. So you'll notice it's now snapped to the cursor. It's aligning to the location and the rotation. Well, I'm gonna get rid of the rotation because I want to keep the rotation that was working from where I put it earlier. And you can see we've got the choice of all the axes and I don't want this in the X or in the Z. I only want it aligned in the Y axis, which is this way. And now I know that is perfectly centered. At this point, I can come into, let's go into this view, and I'm just going to 
G and then X and then X again to stick with this axis of my object. And I'm gonna place it relatively centered. So I think it's probably about there. And then I'm just gonna G and then Z and Z again, again to align my movement with the local axis of this cylinder. And I'm just gonna indent it a bit, probably about there. Right, so I now need to place one here and one at the edge and one on the other side here. So what I'm gonna do, and this is important, is I want this sizing to be about as big as it can get on this surface. This is the smallest surface it's gonna go on. And I don't wanna to have to keep fiddling with things. So what I'm gonna do is press Alt and D instead of Shift and D to duplicate this. So Alt and D there, I'm gonna hit X just so that I know this is exactly on the same axis there in the Y direction. And then once again, I'm gonna use Snap Base. So I'm gonna G, B, Select that face, I want it here, but I'm gonna press Shift and then Y, because I want this to move in every direction other than the Y axis, so now I know that this is, if I click here, completely in line with this one. And then I'm just gonna G and then ZZ, and then move it in a little bit again. I could probably check that this is exactly the same amount. Yeah, probably there. Maybe this one could be a little less, so let's move that out a bit. And then I'm going to increase this in size. Now, because I pressed Alt and S instead of Shift and S to duplicate this, these are actually linked duplicates, which means that if I go into vertex mode, A, and press S to scale it, the other one will scale as well. Notice this only works in edit mode. If I was in object mode, this doesn't work because this is working off the scale and then that one doesn't think it's working. So yeah, it gets confused. So we need to do this in edit mode. So S, Shift and Z, and then Z again to keep it on the local axis. I'm gonna get it to about there. That's probably about the size that I want it. And now I know that this one is exactly the same size. We'll do the same at the end here. So I'm just going to Alt and D just in case there's any other changes that I want to make. And let's Shift and Y again, bring it up to about here. Let's R, Y and 90, because I know it's perfectly 90 degrees round to be on here. And then I'm just gonna come into front view and again, just move it into approximately the right place. I could be more precise with this, but I think that's probably fine, somewhere about there. And then I need one for the other side. So I'm just gonna, again, Alt and D, move that there. I'm gonna R, Y and 180 it. So I'm gonna make sure that this is now facing in the opposite direction. So basically this face here is the equivalent of that face there. This is gonna be important for what I want to do next. And then I'm just going to G, move that into the right place. Oh, and actually this is at a slightly different angle as well. So let's just once again, do that same trick. G, B, that face there, only in the X axis there. Oh, and then I stupidly have moved it out of position. So once again, just Alt and A and it snapped to the right bit. So. Again, it really is that easy with machine tools and line. Oh, I should probably mention, when you start with machine tools and you install it, it won't have a line already on. So if I just come to machine tools and click here, this is machine tools, and you get all of these options, there's two align functions. We're using this align tool. There is also an align pie menu which is for use in edit mode and does something slightly different. I'll put a playlist for machine tools and it covers pretty much most of the things that it does. In fact, maybe all of the things it does that I find useful in this playlist, but we're using this align function. And just to be clear, that pie menu that I've got, that's the modes pie. And then this cursor and origin pie there is what I used to change where the cursor was. So G, Z, Z, Push that in a bit. Let's make sure it's similar to the others. Maybe a little bit more. There we go. And now this is gonna be ready to Boolean out. But before we do that, we're gonna do something different. Now, just to make sure this is visible, I'm gonna come here into my object properties, go to viewport visibility, and I'm gonna change this to wire so we can now sort of see through it. And then I'm gonna move my cursor to here. So Shift and S. Cursor selected, Shift and A, Mesh, and then Cylinder again. And we don't want this aligned to the world origin. We want it aligned to the 3D cursor, so we don't have to fiddle about with this. Let's just select both of them so that they're really easy to see. In fact, actually, no, let's not do that. Let's just select that one and go into X-ray mode. And then G, and then ZZ. I want there to be a bit of an overlap. 
something there so that when we boot in this all together, it's going to work. And then let's get modifying this. Let's go into face mode. Let's G and ZZ that back to somewhere about there. I can't remember exactly what I did with this, so I'm just going to kind of make this up. So I'm going to I to inset it, E to extrude it out again, S to scale it in to give it a bit more of an interesting angle, I to inset it again, E, and then let's Control and B, and then scroll up to make this sort of rounded, and we'll sort of stick with that. So. What am I going to do next? Well, I want to get these in place with all of these, and that's going to be annoying, except for, again, Machine Tools is going to give us the answer. If I have this selected, and then I shift select on the object that it's sort of aligned to, and I want to have it in a similar place, I right click, Machine Tools, Align Relative, and now what this is going to allow me to do is click there, shift click there, and then finally shift click here. And you'll notice that it has created, well, showing is a wireframe where a new version of these is going to appear. It's going to, they're going to appear in exactly the right place. I'm going to scroll up on my mouse wheel. At the moment, you can see there's this blue text that's saying it's duplicating this. I don't want to duplicate it. I want an instance, which is going to turn it green. And we're basically doing the same trick as I did earlier with instancing these objects. It means that I can modify one and it's going to modify all of them. Spacebar to select. And suddenly we've got one of them there. Let's click here, that object, that object, and that object. And then select this, Control and minus to Boolean that out. That's using ball tools. Oh, and you'll notice I made a mistake here. I rotated this the wrong way round. So let's actually just select those and then R, Y, 180 and move that. It's almost like I did this on purpose to demonstrate why I rotated this one round. Otherwise, it would have had the object just where it was here. So let's put that back. And let's just select that and G and then ZZ and move that down a little bit. So there's that overlap. So we do have to be slightly careful with the angle of each of these. So... Now again, this is not quite the right placement, so I'm just going to go into select this, and I'm going to go into vertex mode, A, and then S, move this so it's about the right size, and all of the others are increasing, if we have a look. We're increasing in size with it, so I now know that this is the perfect sizing for all of my holes. Let's H there, H there, H there, and then H there, and we get these cool little bits of detail that we wanted. In fact, I think that's a little bit too big. Let's just S and scale that in a tiny bit. Again, it's done it to all of them. And at the moment, you can notice that these holes are here because I've got this mirrored and they haven't got the bits of detailing in. That's not a problem because once I Boolean these, let's just go there to this. So if I press Control and Plus, then they will appear because they become part of the mirror. But I'm not going to do that yet. I'll save that until the end. I mean, I could do it now, but either way, you can decide when you want to do this. So there we go. We've got some aligning and positioning problems, some relatively easy solutions, and hopefully that is going to help you solve similar annoyances when you're sort of creating things on the fly and you don't have perfect angles to work off of. Now, I just thought I'd quickly come back to the beginning of this point where we started doing this and just mention something that otherwise I know is going to come up in the comments, and that is that there are many, many ways of doing this. For example, if I just once again bring in a cylinder and then G and Y that forward, what we could have done instead is, for example, just move the cursor to this face. If I go into face mode, select this face, shift and S, I could move the cursor to the face and do exactly the same thing with Alt and A and align it to the cursor, and this time we want to keep the rotation, and then that's going to work pretty fine. But I wanted to show one, just different ways of doing things, and the snap base comes with Blender while this is part of a paid for add-on, though we could do things like Shift and S and then move to cursor, and then that will do a similar thing as well. The other reason that I didn't do this is, if you notice, if going to face mode again, because this is made out of booleans that haven't been confirmed yet, while this will go to the middle of the face, this is the whole face, and these aren't quite perfectly aligned. So this doesn't actually work as perfectly centered. So I'll still need to G and then probably Y and Y and move that a little bit. But there are multiple alternatives, especially in Blender, where there's kind of a thousand and one ways to do the same thing. But I just wanted to mention this alternative 
just to really highlight that and why I didn't go for that technique. It was kind of just to show a different methodology of doing things that might be useful in a few more situations and then point out that you've got to be careful with this when you use the cursor if you've got a whole face with booleans because it won't just work on this small section. Anyway, hopefully that was of interest. If it was, give it a like. If you've got any other options of how to do this, put them in the comments section. It's really great to help everyone else out in case there's a technique that's more usable on some specific project that they're working on. And if you are interested in getting machine tools, there is a link in the description, which is an affiliate link. It costs you no more to use it, but it puts a little bit of money towards the channel, which helps pay for the time that it takes to make all of these videos. And if you want to support any further, there is a Patreon page where you get these videos ad free a week early and other great perks as well, like being on the channel discord. Have a great day, guys.